couple of things in the uh, budget on the House side that uh, we were able to do that, uh, and a lot of this budget was predicated on some one-time money, as usual, with the 21st Century Fund, which of course comes from the back of uh, funds. It's 13 million of that is used every year to pay off economic development bonds. Over the last uh, few years, I haven't had to use all of that 13 million. Some of that money's been set aside. Uh, bond issue has been refinanced, so it, it was able to give us one-time monies of, of uh, 20 million there. Uh, some unclaimed property uh, funds from the treasurer's office, approximately uh, 42 million, I uh, was able to use, and also some uh, one-time money of the uh, of privilege, uh, business privilege tax. Uh, of course. <clears throat> The main thing is the, the oil and gas trust fund money, which we uh, borrowed uh, here before last with the September 18th uh, vote, 437 million, used 145 in the last three budget years, uh, this being the, the last year uh, that we can have access uh, to that money because it's all going to be gone. So that, that is the big uh, the driver right there, and of course, we pledged to pay that back, and that's the first bill we passed in last year's session. Was a plan to pay back the 437 million in the, in the general fund budget, and we have a, a schedule to do that. In the general fund, 161 million that we borrowed in 09 and 10, we have 10 years to pay that back, which will be in the year 2020. Uh, nobody wants to talk about that. But uh, we're not going to talk about it this year. <laughs> but, uh, but next year, we've got to start talking about it. But we have five years left to pay that 161 back. And that's constitutional, approved by the voters. If we keep trying to sweep that under the rug. In 2020, 161 million automatically comes out of the general fund budget. There's going to be blood running down uh, Street next year, but this is going to be really be running down Dexter Avenue if you have to take out 161 million in, in 2020. So I'm not sure I want to be here if, uh, if we don't start taking care of that problem starting next year. Able to add a little bit of uh, funds to the program in public health does a very good job for underinsured women, for free screens, for breast and cervical cancer, and also some a, a little bit of increase for the dialysis uh, transportation uh, fund in the public health to, uh, to get folks uh, to their treatments uh, around, around the state. I do want to congratulate uh, Mr. Canary and the BCA for passage of the Tibor bill uh, last week. That was a good thing to, to happen. I know it's been a long and winding road. As Steve mentioned, corrections, I would foresee us, uh, hopefully, you know, Medicaid, we kind of took care of them with, with the 70 some odd million dollars that we have going to correct uh, to Medicaid this fiscal year, but corrections um, is, is kind of the uh, crisis du jour, if you will, and uh, I would see us working with the House of having a, a, a good plan uh, to address some of the needs that they have here in the, couple, in the next couple weeks, being able to address some of their immediate needs and uh, perhaps long-term needs, and we will uh, be rolling some of that out in the coming weeks, and again, I uh, hope that uh, it will help that department uh, going forward. Steve touched on uh, the 2016 budget, and I don't know who will be sitting in our chairs, whether it's us or, or who will be there, but that you know is the time when the uh, ATF transfers go away, and we'll be without that $147 million infusion that we've been getting here for the past three years. And, and we filed two bills last week, which uh, I would see it as a, a start of more difficult decisions that we're going to be, be uh, making or having to deal with in the days ahead. One of those bills is taking our uh, forestry commission and putting him under the uh, agriculture, the Department of Agriculture, and John McMillan. Um, that will save us some significant dollars, particularly over time, and uh, that's a consolidation we seriously need to look at. It is not novel. It is not unique. Many, many states have a combined forestry and ag uh, department, uh, and they're housed in the same, uh, under the same roof, uh, so to speak. And we'll see some savings, uh, not only in properties across the state where there's dual offices and things like that, but also in personnel over time. 
Another one uh, that we filed last week was the Department of Corrections and Parks and Paroles. Again, not unique, um, not uh, something earth shattering, but this is uh, the way it is in many states across the Union where their pardons and paroles uh, function. I'm not talking about the board, the independent partner and parole, parole board, but I'm talking about the, the uh, apparatus is under the Department of Corrections. And the, also had LFO review that. Uh, significantly and there are uh, some savings that we can certainly realize having a seamless transition between an inmate and corrections and then going over uh, to the parts and parole side and having that seamless transition will uh, save dollars. It's something I think we need to deal with. It's another retread but I think the 2015 legislative session is going to make us, force us to make some very hard decisions and that's ABC privatization. Uh, I think that uh, we'll, we'll put a bill out there for everybody to look at on the Allison system. Uh, the prospects of passage would be next to nil, and that's okay, but we want people to look at it and, and see a starting point for when we return in 2015 uh, for that debate and that dialogue. We have a bill in the House now, crowdfunding, which I think is help for, helpful to small businesses. Um, and working with Joe Borg on this bill, that if, uh, with any influence you may have, would be helped, appreciated in getting that, that bill a vote. Patent trolling, that's something that's came on, that's come on here of late. I had a, a constituent up north uh, contacting me back in the summer, saw a couple articles in the Wall Street Journal during the fall, got the bill together, and um, you know I think that would be another good one for the business community here in the state. The um, there's a, a research and development tax credit bill also down in the House now. Uh, it's small, admittedly, but our state doesn't have that, that capability to offer research and development tax credits. This would also help our four-year institutions, state four-year institutions, plus a few research labs that we have across the state. It's a start.